Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us once again here on Health Professional Radio. In this segment, we're going to have a conversation with Matthew Zerhut. He's joining us here as Vice President, Integrated Drug Development at Sertara. He's going to talk about some case studies that exemplify the importance of model-based meta-analysis and biosimulation in early-stage drug development to improve clinical trial success. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Matthew Zerhut. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Neil. Great to be here. Well, give us a bit of your uh, professional background uh, and tell us how you uh, ended up at Sertar. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm an engineer by background. And uh, after, after I got my PhD in bioengineering, I ventured into uh, management consulting for a bit. Uh, but then I, I found myself back in uh, the, the science world, pharmaceutical industry, and have been uh, involved around pharmacometrics, uh, PKPD modeling. Uh, but about eight years ago, I, I started to focus on how we can better leverage external data that's uh, publicly available from uh, other sponsors' clinical trial results that they publish. And so I've been doing that, like I said, for about eight years and joined Sertara uh, a little over a year ago. Um, before that, I had I had some stints at some other uh, pharma companies, Pfizer, J&J, uh, and yeah, so now I've been at Sertara here. Things are going well. Model-based meta-analysis and biosimulation. First of all, what is model-based meta-analysis and biosimulation, and why are these important when it comes to early-stage drug development? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. So um, model-based meta-analysis is, is a bit of a not necessarily an extension, but more of a, a parent category of, of other meta-analyses techniques. And what they aim to do is take information that's already available, uh, clinical trial results that have already been published, and pool them together to get um, more information, more precise estimates of how safe and effective drugs are. So, uh, yeah, here at Sertara, we, we uh, develop these curated databases from the public, uh, public avail publicly available information and use these curated databases to create models that um, better describe the complex data that's out there more, more simplistically. And then based on, th based on those models, we can simulate scenarios that we haven't seen before and really gain insight to understand what might happen if we want to, say, run another uh, clinical trial that pitting two drugs against each other that have never been compared, um, we can kind of foresee or, you know, see into the future a bit to understand what is the likelihood that one drug might turn out to be more effective or more safe uh, than, than the other drug. So not only better understanding the data that's uh, generated by these clinical trials, you're also using the data generated to conduct better clinical trials? That's right. That's right. So, um, Based on the available data, as well as some uh, proprietary data that our clients might have from some early stage trials, we can put those early stage results in the context of everything else that's out there, use that to then simulate what a future trial outcome might might be, and that allows the clients to decide, do they is it worth it to run a more expensive uh, clinical trial, later stage clinical trial? based on everything that we know, or would it make more sense to, you know, put our, uh, put our investment elsewhere in, in drugs that are maybe more likely to succeed in those types of trials. You also use this uh, data to decide which projects to actually pursue and which ones to shelve for a time? That's right. Yeah. Ideally, you know, our, our clients, I mean, they're, they're making these decisions all the time. Uh, every time you develop a, a new drug uh, along the, the development process, you have these uh, decision points, and we call them go-no-go -no -go decisions. You want to make those decisions. You want to be informed when you're making those decisions. So if they have information that suggests that it's highly likely the drug will be successful, then they will continue to develop. If, it's, if the data suggests that it's highly unlikely, they might, like I said, move their, move their investment elsewhere to another, another compound in their portfolio. When it comes to the stakeholders, is this data presented to them, to those who may be um, providing capital for certain clinical trials or uh, drug development? Yeah, yeah. Ideally, I think it absolutely should be. Um, there's there's various uh, 
groups and departments involved in in you know big pharmaceutical companies. Uh, but we uh, we definitely have some examples where we have you know reached those stakeholders. But we you know we can we can definitely grow the the influence that that we could have. And when I say we, I mean the the influence of model based meta analysis or the influence of the publicly available clinical trial data. So um, I think there is a lot more room to improve in how we can influence those decisions. But absolutely, we do have some success stories. Normally, without these types of uh, practices, the, the model-based meta-analysis and the, and the biosimulation, what were the challenges in conducting these trials, gaining the information and understanding it and being able to use it in a more efficient way? Yeah, so I guess if you, if you don't go the route of uh, bringing in this externally, you know, publicly available data through MBMA, then the, the decisions are still going to be made, right? They're just going to be made with uh, more ambiguity, right? More uncertainty. And oftentimes, I mean, you, you see uh, many examples of, of uh, companies running large scale trials that end up uh, uh, not being successful, uh, you know, in phase three or, you know, very expensive large trials that end up not being successful. So, the idea is if they were to make uh, decisions based on more information, uh, like everything that's you know, publicly available data through model-based analyses, um, you would hopefully see fewer of those late-stage failures and, and more of those uh, uh, large trials would actually turn out as expected uh, and be successful. How do you think that MBMA will affect FDA approvals and submission for FDA approvals? Yeah, I think that's a, a really good question, and I think not a lot is uh, is known about how they might uh, uh, accept these. I, I will say um, the, the current state is not – we're not trying to replace any kind of phase three clinical trial with a, a simulation based on an MBMA. What we're trying to do is simulate those phase three trials, uh, and if the simulation suggests that that trial would be successful, then we would actually run the trial and use the evidence generated from the actual trial to present to the FDA for approval. But, but we can use the simulation based on the MBMA to design a trial, you know, to, to optimize the trial design to enable sponsors to make the best decision. Um, and that is whether it is um, a, a positive decision or a negative decision, we want to design that trial so it gives them the best chance of making that correct decision. Is there anything that you'd like to add for our listeners and then give us a website where we can learn more? Yeah, um, I think I, I think in general, um, meta-analysis has has uh, been around for a long time and it's, it's utilized um, frequently by by clinicians or or uh, maybe even statisticians. But. MBMA is a bit unique in that it's applying similar techniques, similar concepts, but targeting the drug development process itself. So targeting uh, decisions uh, in the drug development process itself. So um, I, I think it's, it is in a way related to a, a big movement that's happening with, with data sciences uh, and real world data where there's efforts to um, essentially create synthetic trials. Uh, and I think MBMA and, you know, uh, the use of these publicly available clinical trial results uh, probably fits well into that category. Uh, and, you know, I'm I'm quite excited for the future here because, like I said, we've seen the success stories. We've seen the valuable the impact uh, that MBMA can have. And uh, I'm confident that we'll have uh, many more of those success stories in the near future. And a website where we can learn more about Sotara. Yeah, yeah. So um, in general, you can always go to sertara.com. Uh, there's also a website that uh, allows you to explore the types of databases that we offer um, for the use uh, of M MBMA, and that would be at codex.sertara.com. Codex is C-O-D-E-X dot sertara.com. And sertara is C-E-R-T-A-R-A dot com, correct? That's correct, yes. Matthew, thank you so much for your time this evening. It's appreciated. Yeah, thank you so much. This was great.
You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Mr. Matthew Zerhut. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.